What's that, you say? The Apple Vision Pro and haptic gloves? What technical wizardry is this? But just enough so that you can get a bit of positive feedback into your hands. And every time I touch it, uh, the finger with which I'm touching it gives me a little bit of haptic feedback. The quality of the Apple Vision Pro's pass-through and 4K screen is so good that it poses a significant challenge for developers because the experience the user is given in, in an immersive app or a portal app or, or even just a 2D app is so real that there is naturally an expectation that things within the software will behave as they do in the physical world, in the real world. And this is uh, very apt for apps that deal with 3D objects, 3D object interaction. We have a product that we developed for the Apple Vision Pro, which allows you to tell a spatial narrative. This means telling a story about something that has three dimensions and feels incredibly real. And while doing background research on this, we were looking at how other apps were working and what we realized that people were not able to get right yet, um, but we've cracked it, is that human interaction with the 3D object um, to make it feel real, to make it feel tangible, make it feel like you're, you're right there. And it's behaving in a way that you would expect if you didn't have the Apple Vision Pro on and you actually had that 3D element in your hand. Um, take a look at this, at some of the examples we've done and, and what we've done to improve it. It's, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. This is an app called Jigs and um, it's got some really nice features. You can add some 3D models to it. I'm gonna try and move this top piece. There we go, now I have it. Okay, so there's a quite a big gap here. Fine, let's imagine that's an invisible rod. If I twist my hand, I'm gonna expect it to kind of spin that way. But what you actually get is it, it mirrors what my hand is doing. So that isn't natural. That's not what happens in the real world. And I can, so if I pick it up and I wanna twist it back around the right way, I have to sort of learn how to spin it. So I'm having to learn how to interact. You see how it does, it's just not connected to me. So it's a disconnected experience. Um, great app, but the interaction is, is, is really hard and, and not particularly natural. And that's the problem we're trying to solve. This is a Sky Guide app. It's absolutely beautiful and it, it's stunning. They've got this beautiful sky box, stunning sky box around you. But one of the things I wanted to look at specifically was this, this, this the interaction they have with 3D objects in here. So these star signs are beautiful in the, in, in the sky here and I can actually pinch to drag them out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pinch that. I'm gonna bring that swan down here. But one of the challenges I have, and it's a minor, it's a minor criticism of what is otherwise a beautiful app, um, is, is trying to position this in a way that I, that I want it. You can see as I rotate my hand, it is mirroring my hand's motion. But if I want to kind of get it to beak up, it's, I really have to contort myself. Um, and then if I let it go, that's great. It's kind of in a position that I can look at it. Um, I can read up information about it, but I can't reposition it anymore. It's now, if I try to interact with it again, it, it jumps back into the sky. So this is our spatial storytelling app. We wanted to perfect the interaction with the 3D elements that make up this model. So I can, I can deconstruct this, which just kind of throws it apart. Uh, and then I can pinch to select and pick something up, but look how it's being picked up. My fingers are directly picked up the item where where I was looking at it. And then when I pivot my hand, it pivots around the axis as if I was holding it. It's not sort of six inches away or 150 millimeters, 152 millimeters, if you're being really precise. Um, it's directly on it. And, and if I let it go, it stays there. Now I can pick it up from another area. So maybe I want to pick it up from under here so I can just pick that up from there and then I can twist it towards me or I can twist it away. And again, it's pivoting and it's a way more natural interaction. Um, and it's much easier to get this thing into a position that I want it. So I wanna pop that over there in, in place. So I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna do that. And then it will snap into place. Um, but I also can put the things together out here. And, and again, this fine control, allowing me to pick the object up from a part of it uh, and and then twist it kind of as if it's as if I'm holding it 
in the real world and it behaving how I expect it. And that's kind of the key thing with spatial computing is creating an experience that, that the user is going to expect. So I can, um, I can, you know, pretty much line these up really easily. So I can, I can kind of, yeah, I've even got those gears interlocked pretty much correctly. So you can always see I've got that perfectly aligned with this fine control, which you just don't get in, in some of these other apps. And that's been a big, that's been a big challenge to work on to get that interaction where you can pick it up with either hand from anywhere on the object and the object in, um, react like you've picked it up from that point. Oh, there we go. There we go. Just about got it. Um, but you can see, you'll have seen a number of times I've picked it up and I thought I'd had it um, and I didn't. And so the app hasn't noticed that I've got it. And we kind of want to work to refine that, make that a bit better. But we, we were trying to work out well, what other ways are there that we could make it, give some feedback to the user that they've selected this item. Now, obviously there's visual cues. We can flash this, we can, we can do animation. But what I thought would be really nice is if we could use some kind of lightweight haptic glove. And so we, we got these haptic gloves. Now these are developer only at the moment. You can't use these with anything else. But effectively, these are some relatively basic haptic gloves. Uh, and they have a haptic engine on each finger uh, and on the, on, the, on the wrist here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn them on. Now, what's great is these don't um, affect the the Apple Vision Pro's ability to see your hands, they can see it. So now I want to connect the gloves and now they're connected. So that's all beautiful. So um, what I can do now is when I pick this up, I had a, uh, had, a, had a haptic there, which gave me that feedback that I had it. And, that, and that's just, we're not trying to create super duper force feedback gloves, which require a whole backpack and a massive set. This really lightweight stuff, but just enough so that you can get a bit of, inter bit of positive feedback into your hands and you can't see it on the video but this is every time I touch it uh, the finger with which I'm touching it gives me a little bit of haptic feedback which kind of lets me know that I've that I've successfully interacted with that object um, and it gives a whole sense of realism that I think otherwise wouldn't be there and so that yeah this is something that we're, we're, we're investigating at the moment and they're working really well.